Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Corner Talks podcast. Today, I have a friend, writer, actress, Kristen Lammy. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Thanks I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Uh, it means a lot. Always a pleasure to speak to fellow creatives, uh, people that I've uh, collaborated with uh, in the past. You know, you and I, we have a background in uh, the uh, 48 hour film competition in Toronto. Uh, that's where I first met you. Um, we yeah. collaborated. It was such a chaotic day. I had a lot of fun. Uh, that was back in what Lib- yeah, Liberty Village, fun. I believe. Yeah, but yeah. I was I was never on a, a project where we were forced to make something uh, in forty eight hours, right? Usually you film it in forty eight hours, <laughs> but you, but mm-hmm. not to produce it to to completion. Um, yeah, you had the sim- you had a, a similar experience. Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a it was a crazy day. <laughs> I remember it being very hectic, but we got it done. So yeah, and I met a lot of cool people on the job. That one of them being you. Thank so, you. Thank you. Yeah, it worked out. <laughs> yeah, it's important to have those um, those mo- those uh, opportunities, right? And those experiences. And I talk about this on the podcast a lot about the concept of showing up. A lot of people refrain from it because um, the 48-hour film competition, I remember when I was in California and shout out to my uh, friend Robo, uh, Isa. He, uh, you know, said, hey, did you want to be part of this project? And I'm like, 48 hours. I'm like, I've never done something like this. Mm-hmm. Um, but it pays to be involved because again, we meet each other, we meet other people, uh, in the industry and you never know when we're going to collaborate again, kind of thing, right. It's always important to have that network. Uh, so never turn down those opportunities. Exactly. No, for sure. And I feel like I've kept in touch or at least have connected on social media with at least half of the people on the, on the crew. So yeah, I agree. It's, it's really about networking more than anything. Of course. And, uh, you know, a lot of time has passed since that 48 hour film competition. I think it's been already two years now, maybe even three coming up mm-hmm. and, you know, a lot of progress, right? I've seen a lot of growth uh, with you as an artist, uh, seeing you develop your passion projects, networking with professionals in the industry, um, like we were discussing before the podcast, that show you're working on. Um, but I want to know before we dive into it, like, why did you pursue, uh, the path of an artist and more particularly one of a storyteller? Yeah, that's a good question. People ask it a lot and I, it's always hard to say, cause for me, it was always since I was really young, like I was always involved in art somehow. Um, right. like I grew up in Jamaica and I came here when I was around 10. So when I was there, I was like dancing, I was, you know, doing dramas, doing that. And then when I came here, right. I kind of transferred, um, I didn't dance as much when I came here, um, just my mom, so kind of had to keep it, you know, the straight and narrow, so, um, but I was involved in, like, drama classes in elementary school, art class, all through high school, I did drama, um, when I was going into university, my mom wanted me to do graphic design, but I was like, that's not really mm-hmm. what I wanted to do, because I would try to, right. so nice. I didn't really want to do that, uh, she's like, well, it's a good way for you to you know, be an entrepreneur, make money, et cetera. And I just convinced her like, that's not what I'm going to go do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I knew I wanted to do film and I just. That's not of, what drives you, right? Like your, yeah. your mom was, was suggesting like, you know, be entrepreneurial about it. You can make money, but you, you're after yeah, the exactly. arts. You're after telling the story. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, I, I liked to draw. Like I did media arts in high school as well. Uh, and drama. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't like something I was passionate about. So I kind of thought, okay, how can I convince my very Caribbean mother that I can do yeah. do this, but maybe in a professional way? So I was like, okay, well, how about like journalism or something? Like I can be a, a host and I can still be in front of the camera and still be involved in television production somehow. Right. Um, but uh, a lot of the programs required like a portfolio and it was literally like last minute that I had to convince her. So I decided to do communication studies and I did that uh, at Laurier and I double majored in film. Nice. Um, so even during that time, I was still, even though I was like, okay, I'll go to journalism. I was still very focused on film and film production. Um, and I would take acting classes in the summertime, um, when the terms were over. Um, yeah. And so that's just kind of how I, I kind of got into it. It just kind of followed my passion and stopped convincing myself out of doing what I wanted to do. And just, yeah. 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 No, that's very important. And, and a lot of us have that tendency. Uh, I, I don't know if you still experience it, but even though we're on the path, uh, you know, of the artist, we still have those days where we have doubt or we, we question, like, is this going to turn out? Um, I think it's just normal, right? As, as humans, right? We don't know because nothing's guaranteed. Um, but you followed your heart and you proved that uh, it was worth your while because uh, you, you made it you made it work for yourself. That's what I took from your story. It's kind of admirable in a way. And I like that you said you 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 loved drawing, you had a talent in it. And there was a, a suggestion about going into graphic design. I myself uh, had that same 
uh, suggestion when I was in high school. I used to take these graphic design classes. Uh, we used to do like ad campaigns for uh, MADD, Mother Against Drunk Driving. And my teacher was, uh, I never forget this day. He asked me like going into university, what are you going to study? And I said, well, probably marketing, which at the time was even further from my dream of filmmaking. But I just said, you know, like you, right? You're dealing with all these different voices. Like it's probably more viable, more practical. And he was just so upset. He's like, you're so creative. Um, you're, you're so much of an artist that you, why would you pick marketing and not go for graphic design? Um, but what he didn't realize, and even my parents at the time is I had that, uh, my true, my heart lied in filmmaking. I didn't even care about those two subjects entirely. Um, but that just goes to show, see with you, yourself is that it's not like you studied a different program. You, you made it work for yourself. You kind of navigated, um, you know, going to uh, double majoring, right. I even saw you got your master's at Ryerson, right. For media production. Yeah. yeah congratulations I I, again. I yeah. Did. Congratulations again. Um, that takes a lot of work. Uh, people don't realize that, uh, yeah, my sister always uh, jokes around because uh, I write a lot as well, whether it's per personally or professionally. And uh, yeah, that's all. That's all. You're not doing algorithms. You're not doing uh, you know complex uh, data analytics. You're doing writing. That's all from the mind. Mm -hmm. That that that's yeah. very strenuous on in its own, right? Um, mm -hmm. But that's really cool uh, that that uh, you you didn't do something like accounting and then did film. You you said no. I want to make it work for myself. I want to be associated mm -hmm. with the arts as best as I can. Yeah, yeah, that really what it it's what it was, and then you know eventually she kind of uh when, with parents at least you know once you see that you're very committed and driven to what yeah. you're doing, they kind of start to adapt. Like with my mom, it, it, she's always been very supportive, but during that time when she saw I was serious, she kind of came back and was like, "Okay, I get it." And even the other day, I was writing a short script to submit to something, and she's like walking around the room telling me how to write the story. Like, this is yeah, what's yeah, yeah. Here. They get it. So, they yeah, get involved too. They they're proud of you, right? Yeah. And that's that's something that I was you know telling you before the podcast. You were asking me what I'm up to. Starting this business, 94 Productions. Before that, like before 2019, 2020, whatever. You know, my parents were always like, "Are you sure this is going to work for you? Like, you should maybe figure out another path for you." And rightfully so, right? Like when you, we become parents of our own one day, it's like <laughs> our kid coming up to us that they want to be artists. Yeah, it's relatable, but we're obviously going to be nervous, right? Because we know that you have to have a certain tenacity, a certain commitment. Uh, to make mm -hmm. it happen but i think like you said is that it's not about talking it's about the action and you going to mm -hmm. school you getting the, the the degree um you getting that uh recognition from the industry uh it gives you it gives that your mom that assurance that you know what uh, i'm gonna make it work for myself i don't know how, where i'm gonna end up but i'm i'm, I'm gonna do it do what's right for me mm -hmm. so that it, yeah, it's exactly. uh commend you to that bravery for sure um i like that a lot Thanks. So things have gotten better, obviously, your parents, your friends, like no, no setbacks, no challenges, like everyone's supportive of your career, your choices. Yeah, of course. My mom's supportive. And that's the number one thing. All my friends, you know, they're supportive. They, whatever yeah. I do, they, it doesn't really matter to them. <laughs> not that it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, exactly. No, I know what you mean. Everyone's living support. their own lives. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> exactly. Living their own they're not going to be like, don't get into the arts. No, they're, they're definitely, definitely supportive and always have been. Um, so yeah, no, no one's ever told me. No, and I. To. No, Unless they're silently up, judging me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, when, I, when I bring up friends, you're absolutely, you made such a good point. It's so true. We're at that age, right? Um, where in our twenties, everyone's doing their own thing. So they don't really have time to like judge, judge you. And even if they did, it's like, it's your life. Like they're not going to tell you to change it, but I have dealt with creatives or I talked to them where uh, not only do they have their family, but their friends making comments or judgments and putting them down. So I was just curious if that ever happened to you, but it sounds like you have a very supportive circle. Yeah, no, at this point, yes. I'm, as I said, back in high school when I was picking my path, then yeah. at that point, my mom was, was mostly my mom that was just like, mostly eh, yes, yes. are you sure you're trying to struggle? The old school mentality, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Be a doctor. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes it's a cultural thing. Like, I mean, my mom's not very traditional in that sense, but some parents right. I know they are very traditional. So maybe that's why other people have a harder time, but. Yeah, no, for sure. That's, that's something I can relate to. Yeah. Like my, my parents are immigrants, right. They came from Italy. So they have that mentality. So when you start telling them that you want to be a filmmaker, <laughs> they're thinking uh, that doesn't sound like doctor or lawyer or accountant or architect mm -hmm. or anything, right. Anything traditional, but doesn't nevertheless, like <laughs> it doesn't sound like money. Let's be honest. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, like it's not like I'm going to them. Like, it's not like I'm going in there and I'm saying, you know, I'm starting a construction business. We're going to renovate people's basements. Yeah. That's like, then they could see like, yeah, there's a market yeah, for that, right? But exactly. when I go to them, it's like, yeah, you know what? Like I'm an aspiring, I want to be a director. I want to be like a Tarantino, like tell stories that are gritty, raw. What? <laughs> so yeah, they can't, they can't put two and two. But 
uh, grateful for my parents. They've been very supportive. I'm very lucky and blessed uh, that they're giving me that, that peace of mind while I pursue this path. And the same mm-hmm. for yourself, right? Um, it's so important as creatives. Like we have that delicate balance. Not only do we have to focus, and you should know as a writer, not only do you have to focus on the content you're producing, but you have to deal with all these like voices outside of your head. And if you have at least one person, especially your mom supporting you, it makes the ride that much smoother. So when we first spoke at the 48 hour film festival, uh, I remember you seeing involved in the editing process and I kind of pegged you as an editor. Um, and I could be wrong, but I, I honestly did think you were the editor, but now I'm looking at your social media. I'm following your journey. You're more of an actress and a screenwriter, correct? Yeah, exactly. As a, uh, no, I'm not. I, I know how to edit, you know, a bit if I have to do it right. myself, but I, I'm not an editor. Um, and at the time when I joined the 48 hour challenge, it was through somebody who was in my mentorship program. And I just kind of was like, yeah, I'll help out. Like, I didn't really care what, what role it was as long right. as it was something I could not manage and not completely mess up. And so that's why I did the, the DIT role that I did, right? The digital, yeah. whatever that stands for. <laughs> right. DIT, yeah. yeah, I heard of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah so I always I saw you. I thought you were like an assistant editor or something like that. And obviously there were so many of us that day and I didn't really have time to talk to everybody. But it was interesting when we got each other on Instagram, I was like, oh, she has actress, screenwriter, creative producer, uh, nothing about editing. And obviously you have a background, but I know there's people that want to be identified as certain roles. Um, mm-hmm. And you, you, it makes sense. You showed up as, as a way to you know, be involved and shadow and see what was, what was up, right? Um, mm-hmm. So this project, uh, speaking to you as you know, an actress and a screenwriter, this project called uh, Pretty for a Whack Girl, um, you've been getting a lot of attention for it. Uh, it's caught my eye. Um, curious about it. Uh, if you want, send me a link, uh, I, I was trying to track it down whenever it's available. I want to know, like, what was the inspiration that led you uh, to create this mini web series? Um, when I was in my master's program, um, uh, like the program was really great. It, it allowed me to really feel more confident in what I was doing, but um, it was very much like you had to be driven and you kind of had to make things happen as you were talking about before. So I was in that one of one class I was in, it was a media production class specifically for my master's group. Um, but it was like, we had a project and they just said, create whatever you want. They didn't really care what we created, just create something. And I was okay. like, okay, I'm at Ryerson. They have like some good equipment and I'm getting, getting to use it for free. So let me just, yeah. uh, and at the time I was a research, uh, teacher's assistant. So, or sorry, a graduate assistant. Right. So I had access to like undergraduate students who wanted to get hours and I was like, okay, let me just make this spin it away. So I decided to write a script. Um, didn't know what it was about at first. I kind of uh, was through some activities in class and I figured it out. Um, wrote the script, went through that process, got some students to help out. And then we um, made the pilot episode of it on campus and did that. And I was like, you know what? Like I actually really do relate to the story um, and I decided to continue with it after I finished school. And that was basically the start of it. I, yeah, just threw a class and I decided to continue it. Um, and the story again is just to me relatable. It's, it's just about a young black millennial woman who's, you know, close to my age, who just trying to make it through life, trying to figure out the world of love and dating and all that stuff. Like it's a pretty standard story, but, but with a right. twist and like she ends up. Age. Yeah, exactly. And she uh, ends up signing up for her friend's psychology of love project. So friend's uh, psychology teacher studying nice. love and black love. And, and that's basically the story. And uh, yeah, and just kind of continued from there. Afterwards, I just um, was in a mentorship program um, called, at the time it was called uh, Black Youth. Well, now it's called OEI Emerging, but before it was called Black Youth Film. Um, and so it was just a program for Black youth between the ages of 18 uh, to 26. And through that, I was able to, again, utilize that those resources. The people who were in the program at the time, I brought them on as um, to, on the production. And then so we kind of went from there and just created more episodes. And I just worked through it. Just yeah. How many, episodes, <laughs> how many episodes is it? Uh, there are five. And initially when I wrote wow. them, it was actually supposed to be three episodes oh actually okay. sorry I had a pilot episode and I was going to create uh two more episodes to make right. a total of three um but then it during the editing process I decided to split the last two episodes into four so now nice. it's five yeah what's the uh and what's the runtime for each episode um well the first episode is about 10 minutes or so and the rest of them are under 10 minutes so 
Okay, cool. So it's like a little short series, uh, well, mini web series, uh, hence the name. Uh, that's really cool. And, you know, it's a relatable story. Uh, you know, we're all millennials here, uh, where the people, <laughs> most of my audience that listens, uh, so they can understand, uh, you know, what you just described, like that subject matter, right? Like navigating life, love, career, um, things mm-hmm. like that. And um, yeah, so, so you've been getting a lot of attention, like from festivals, I saw it got uh, an official selection. Yeah, somewhere? well, so far I've only submitted to one festival. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> so one for one. Yeah. You're one for one. There you go. Exactly. I submitted yeah. to the TLF Fest, and so it's showcasing right now. Um, nice. Well, I don't know when this is coming out, but it's showcasing right. now <laughs> this time July. Nice. Um, yeah, so it's been it's been good in that sense, and I've been just spreading the word through Instagram. That's how I've really been navigating this. So this is, uh, so this is through... Um, your studies, you created this project you were you're explaining, like in your master when you were at Ryerson, you utilized your resources. Uh, yeah, like the people I, there? yeah, exactly. It wasn't like a part of my thesis. I ended up writing a script for my thesis, uh, not thesis, uh, dissertation. Okay. Um, but yeah, I was in a class and I was just able to like create anything. So I just decided to create that. <laughs> yeah, that was the there way it go. started. Yeah. yeah. So it's all completed. There's no more episodes, possibly another season or no, or is this done? Uh, no, my goal, well, see, it, it was really low budget. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hey, budget, like, you're talking to the master of no low budgets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> running running no, with a Tim's. I mean, like, uh, car, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like even after, like after I finished, I was like, you know what? Let me create some more episodes and see how I can spin this. It was like my money. Yeah. So it wasn't a very big budget. Um, So creating more another season will be dependent on if I can get funding uh, from other sources, of which course, is helpful to be in in this space of like the, the TO Web Fest because they have those connections. So, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see. I think the next thing would be if I make more episodes, it would be like a revamping of it with a higher budget and like- Yeah, of course, yeah. the production value. Yeah, yeah. Like you would just redo yeah. it and start fresh for sure. Get that HBO exactly, yeah. uh, green light. Can you imagine? That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> That's yes. what you're trying to do. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> with some great storytelling, uh, you know, happening. I think what caught my eye, uh, other than the story, is uh, I really enjoyed the title. Um, people don't realize like the title is the first thing that people hear. And it has to be a nice title that kind of like pulls you in, that draws you in, uh, makes you curious about what the story is being told. And yeah, I, I thought it was really cool. Pretty for a whack girl. It was like to the point. Um, it had like uh, playful words in there. So really cool, really cool stuff. Uh, I want to know from this experience, though, creating this project, how has it helped you grow as a filmmaker or what kind of things have you learned going forward? Um, yeah, well, it's like, it's the first project I decided to put out in the world, whether or not I felt it right. was perfect or um, exactly what I wanted it to be. I was like, you know what, I'm going to do this and put it out in the world. So yeah, um, and when I was in school, like a lot of what we learned, it's, you know, universities were academic, even if you're taking films. So it's like yeah. writing essays and yes, you get to get some hands-on experience, but it's nothing like actually just going out and doing it. Yeah. Um, so I learned a lot about production, a lot of, about producing. I, I held, I held mul- mul- I'm, I'm not speaking English. <laughs> I had multiple <laughs> roles. <laughs> I held multiple <laughs> positions within within the project. So I was right. like the was the producer. I directed all the episodes and I wrote all the episodes. And I'm not trying to pull a Tyler Perry, but it was just in that moment I had to to kind of do do that. I had to take on a lot of the roles to yeah, get. Yeah, you have it to done. wear multiple hats. Um, because yeah. sometimes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and just so people can, sometimes people are a little hesitant when they haven't seen what you've done before or they haven't seen yeah. your work. So yeah. uh, taking on like the head roles, I, I did that. And I brought on other people who could kind of uh, could be the production manager and do other roles that they were more suited, suited to do. Um, so I learned a lot about just how to manage a, a production. I learned a lot about um, about directing. I didn't do it perfectly and I, I didn't really know what I was doing per se, but I right. have to teach myself and learn from the people around me. So I would say, yeah, but just how to just run a production and work, as you said, 48 hour challenge was like a huge, like was really crazy and hectic. So uh, yeah, similar to this, my time was very hectic and I just have to learn how to manage stress and all that and do a short well, every, period of time. Yeah, for sure. Every, every, excuse me, every director starts somewhere, right? Cause the, the whole thing, the concept that I really have to take in for myself, because I'm the same way, right? You go on, you, you have made the m- most amount of projects and you're still like developing a confidence yourself, right? Like seeing where you fit in in this career uh, on, on set, especially. 
but I kind of just tell myself, and I'm sure you're getting to that point where it's like, if I want to get, if I want this project to be told and authentically, like from, from myself, I have to, you know, fall and make mistakes and just go with it and not let it bother me. Right. Like you, you didn't, you, you took on the role of director, right. And you were saying that you, you felt like you could, you didn't do it to the best of your ability, or even if you did, you, you felt like there were some issues here and there, but at the end of the day, like you did it, you, you went for it. And that's how you learn for your next project. Um, mm-hmm. you're not going to know, even if you, like you said, you study in school, uh, that's, that's the one, the only issue I have with, uh, school is like film school is, is I believe there's a lot of theory. Um, I know there's some schools that they allow you to get on set and, and for your final year, you actually make a film, but, um, being in the business, uh, I'm sure you can say the same shadowing, uh, filmmakers or just t- connecting with people that have been in it for a longer time. You realize like it's all action. It's not mm-hmm. talking like people just want to see you work and you, learn and uh, grow on set. That's why a lot of people start off as production uh, assistants, right? Or runners, because yeah. they, they understand that you could talk about it all day, like making movies, but until you witness it, until you actually are in it and see what it's like, get your hands dirty. Um, mm-hmm. You'll never know, right? You'll never know what it's like to actually put something together yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's very true. As I said, like, you know, it's, you can write all the essays and dissertations you want to write, but yeah, it's nothing like doing it and I. <laughs> you can do <laughs> all I mean, the research papers, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And, I mean, that's why I signed up for a lot of mentorship programs and networking. After that, I was like, anything I can find, I would sign up for. Like, I signed up for OEA, OEA's Emerging Filmmakers Program. Um, and I did other mentorship programs with WIFT and went nice. to LIFT, which is a resource center for the arts. You can take classes there. So, yeah, I did. I did everything and made all the connections and just pushed and that's what you really have to do like you said yeah and that's what I was telling you before the podcast uh I'm finding myself in that situation where you know you you have all your ducks lined up in a row right you're, you're making all you're planting your seeds everywhere and um you know that's the that's the thing about the business people don't understand is that it's a lot of catching up and waiting right like you don't know when the next opportunity will come uh but you also can't wait around um, that's part of the reason why you see me so adamant about doing these podcasts and, uh, you know, just the consistency is because you never know who's watching really. You never know, uh, who could be, who, what guest could be your next uh, client, uh, your next collaborator, uh, or really your next friend, I should mention, right. You never know who, uh, will come in your life kind of thing. Right. So I think it's so important that, uh, like you just said, you didn't stop and wait. You didn't just write scripts in your room. You were signing up for mentorship programs. You were studying in school, um, and you were connecting with those that can advance your career, All right? So that's cool. Mm-hmm. A lot of great stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, after completing this project, though, I do have to ask you: you, you're an actress. Were you an actress in this, by the way, the web series? No, no, I was not. Okay. I was initially going to be, uh, but then once I realized how many things I had to do, it's like I can't do everything. Else. Yeah, don't, don't. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't <laughs> yeah, advise you exactly. to do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I wanted to know though being on set making this project there are people that i know everyone especially at our level wears multiple hats because we kind of have to take control of the project is there a role that you see yourself doing for the rest of your life at this point yeah i mean i i i love acting and i um, I've been doing less and less of it since I really focused on what I'm what I, uh, behind the scenes. Yeah, because you got the headshots on your Instagram. So I don't know if you're still going for auditions and looking for yeah, roles still, and stuff like that. Yeah, I still audition. I still nice. have an agent. I, I don't go it as often as, as I would like to. And right, I don't right. go out for as much scripted roles. That's another conversation in itself. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, I, I still go out for auditions or I, in this case, everything's for virtual. So Zoom. So I still do. Um, but I've mostly been busy, you know, behind the scenes. Like I also have a, a company, so I've been trying to build that and and look into creating more work. Um, and I currently work on a production full time, so that takes up a lot of my time yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of where, where I see myself moving forward, I like I'm a writer, so I definitely see myself advancing as a screenwriter, uh, okay. as a creative producer. And I say creative producer because there's so many different kinds of producers, but more of like a one day I would love to show run, like be a showrunner for my own project and, right. and you know, be a head writer. Um, still nice. would love to act, but I think I want to pull like, Issa Rae is a queen and she said uh, in an interview that she kind of, she moving forward, she wants to do more, pro- in terms of acting, she wants to do projects that really fulfill her. And um, and that's just kind of what she, she won't do any and everything. She definitely won't do multiple things at once. Like right. I definitely won't 
direct, produce, write, and act in something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think moving forward, just I would love to con- continue to write, be a screenwriter, have my own show one day, um, and act in things that I feel fulfill me. Like I just don't feel fulfilled in auditioning and acting for things just for the sake of having a, a, a acting job. Um, right. So I'm more. Well, that's I not where like your heart more... lies, from what I from what I can tell, right? Like, what I've noticed yeah. is trend is a lot of actors and actresses that I get in contact with they start to make this transition of the filmmaker right there are some that have the knack for acting like they just like that role but for yourself it sounds as if you want to tell your own stories you want to um you know share the world share with the world uh your experiences in life and whether that is through a tv show or film whatever have you so be it right mm-hmm. yeah. yeah exactly that is the the goal the yeah that's good yeah well it, it's important i'm glad you said that though because i um I tried to dabble with acting as well. Um, like acting slash modeling, like just seeing if I could, cause again, we, we all, we take any opportunity to see if we can get ourselves on set and connect with professionals in the industry. But I thought about that. I'm like, you know, do I really want to go for that audition? Do I really want to take on that role? And I'm happy you said that it's like, sometimes we don't need to take so all these opportunities. Sometimes we could just take uh, the ones that benefit us or the ones that we see we fit properly right we don't just take it just to take it right we have to it has to connect align with who we are as a person or our brand Mm -hmm. no i agree yeah that that's really what it is because i mean before when things were open and i was going to auditions in person it was mostly like like i would leave the audition i'd feel like did i really just drive all the way here (laughs) yeah yeah and that's and even though that's not the the best way of thinking a lot of actors you just kind of go and you do the thing and you hope for the best outcome exactly but for me it was just like the things i was going for didn't feel very fulfilling or it just felt like okay i do this and then what you know so it just felt more fulfilling for me to be the person giving opportunities and you know yeah creating the work yeah fulfillment yeah you said it right there that's the key word um you know you have to at the end of the day right you can hustle you can grind it out but you have to feel fulfilled right and if you're not feeling that there's something wrong you have to you have to change the uh the trajectory so um that's cool and um you know speaking of this web series really excited for you um you submitted to your first festival you're one for one <laughs> you got an official selection there right so it's doing uh uh it's run i want to know uh though with social media uh, cause we, we were millennials. Um, we know how advantageous it is yet entertaining as well. And, and, in our, not only our industry, but just as the, if the pandemic proved anything, it's just in life, right? Like networking and business and things like that. I want to know, like, how has social media benefited, uh, you know, your exposure, uh, to whether it was your web series or you as a person, you're, you're, uh, being a creative or the industry, mm-hmm. has it helped mm-hmm. you? Has it, uh, advanced your career or not <laughs> yes and no because i'm just really bad at social media. Oh, okay, okay. i mean that's fair. in the sense that i'm not as i'm not very i'm a person like i'm not very active yeah. on there like i don't i'm not posting selfies i, I post right. on my stories if I, I feel it but i'm very much so focused on doing the thing that i'm not always posting about the thing gotcha. so um yeah i feel like for the for the web series it has because um that's that's the main platform I, I I post on was is Instagram for the web series and I feel like that's a great way to build audience I've tried you know ad campaigns through Instagram and Facebook um and YouTube as well so so it's it's helped to gain attention in that way um I haven't focused too much on the algorithms but yeah I think in terms of the on that side it has in terms of staying connected to my peers in the industry it's been good because I mean again you remember me because we're on Instagram um, we, we connected on Instagram. So uh, per, on my personal account, it's helped in terms of keeping connections in, in the industry. Um, on the web series, it's helps in getting attention for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you use that platform to get other actors uh, on board or uh, it was strictly Instagram? through your school? Yeah. Instagram or it was just word of mouth. Um, so series. it was like, it was social media and also casting platforms. Like the first episode I it was through Facebook. I posted on like Ryerson had a casting page, nice. um, and Ma- and I posted on Mandy, I believe. Yeah, Mandy's um, a good one. Like, yeah. yeah, it's 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 kind of like Actors Access casting workbook, but only like more for uh, indie projects. <laughs> no, I feel like um, I feel so. like Mandy's one of the greatest uh, portals because it's it, there. People are so receptive on there. Like everybody, like you said, it's for independent projects. Like you you need someone to show up in a certain look. They'll send you your demo. They'll like be ready. To, they're just ready to show up and yeah 
I've had some mm-hmm. good experiences that way. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great way to, to start out, definitely. Um, but yeah, that's how I pretty much cast the rest of the episodes. And yeah, I feel like if you're an actor who doesn't really have, you don't have any credits and you're still trying to figure it out, I felt like Mandy was where I went to, to start right. off. That's where I got some of my first projects. And then you kind of phase out of Mandy, but you know, it, to start off, it's great, I feel. Nice, yeah. Um, I want to know, I want to know, you said you're working on a production right now, uh, whether it's confidential or not. I don't know if you can talk about it. But uh, how's the experience so far uh, being a screenwriter? Uh, oh, like the, my, my nine your, to your five. Your current job. I don't know if it's confidential, <laughs> the project. I'm not sure how it works. Yeah, your full-time nine oh, to five. Yeah, our more 24-7 job. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not, I know, I think at this point it's not, say, just released a season two. So uh, it's a CBC show, Copycat Cases, and I was, uh, again, we spoke and then one of the people we worked with works on the show as well uh, for the 40 hour challenge. And that's how, again, staying connected, making connections. So through connecting with this person uh, um, that we both know, um, yeah, I was able to get on this production. I was a writer's assistant. Um, I started in February. So up until like a few weeks ago as a writer's assistant and now um, um, working more as a coordinator. So um, that involved a proofing script. So not, I'm not really writing any scripts right now. I'm mostly doing all, most of the admin stuff, like proofing scripts and oh, okay, um, cool. keeping track of schedules, um, uh, just kind of, kind of um, being the middleman for all the departments yeah. who want to connect with the, the script department. So that's mainly my job. Um, and it's been very busy. It's in, in full production right now for their second season. Um, yeah, I've been learning a lot about the TV world uh yeah but otherwise but it's great great but it's but you're the middleman but it's great exposure right you're constantly with creatives you're constantly in the industry um Mm -hmm. you will have your opportunity your time right well where they're gonna say can you can you write a story right it's kind of like uh reminds me uh italy they won the euro cup and there was a guy named chiesa on there and he was like a sub in the beginning of the the tournament and he ended up scoring the game winning goal that helped us helped us uh claim victory near the end so it's like, mm-hmm. you're going to yes. have your, your moment to kind of like jump on. You might write like that episode. That's like, whoa, who wrote that? Right. So <laughs> that's how I look at it. That's kind of, that's, that's really goal. cool. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a stepping stone. I mean, it's one of the, it's like a entrance level job into screenwriting. So it's like a lot, yeah. a lot of the times people who enter writer's assistant or script coordinator, they want to be writers. They don't want to aspire to be most of the time full-time coordinators, but yeah, that's the goal. And it's been good. As you said, I've, I've, I get to meet people in different departments. I get to know the ADs, the office, you know, the production coordinators, the producers. I work through, like right. next to the showrunners and help manage their schedules and stuff like that and casting. So it's, it's good. You're kind of like in the center of everything. And you, and you work in the CBC time. offices? I work from home right now because of the pandemic. But oh, okay, um, okay. yeah, Originally? but they... Uh, Were you there? No, no, no. So... Oh. No, I was, I was, all, I, because I came in during the second season, I was always just, just at home, but uh, right. yeah, we don't, we don't directly work for CBC. So like it's a production company, which is Cameron, oh, gotcha. Picture, yeah. Makes sense. Cameron Pictures, yeah. and then CBC is just the network that they report to. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so all the, all the heads, of, you know, um, there's a studio that they work out of, like a studio where they build the sets. And that's basically where everyone on the show will be working. And then all the producers, the work at Cameron Pictures their office and CBC works at CBC <laughs> that's amazing yeah, 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 yeah so I haven't no, that makes been, sense yeah working there. yeah yeah, yeah no, no I just imagine because it's different here right like the industry yeah. compared to the states so I'm, I'm I'm picturing like that's a CBC show but I forget that there are there are production companies um that sell it to the network and then the network mm-hmm. broadcasts it right <laughs> like they're the ones that they're the, they're the gatekeepers <laughs> basically <laughs> decide, yeah right yeah report to them yeah but it's yeah. So so I haven't been to. Uh, I've just been at home working from home. Nice. Um, which has been good. It's. How long have been, you been doing this, by the way? This role, um, since February. So the. Yeah. Oh wow! So it's just it's a, it's pretty recent that you got this uh, position. Yeah, exactly. It's only nice. been a few months. It feels it feels like a long time because again. Yeah, it feels like a. When yeah. you're in it, your life is like this is your life right now, like. But even the <laughs> even with the pandemic, like you know what I mean, it's, it's only been six months. But I feel like we've been it's been five years. Mm-hmm. Uh, like say I'm saying six months, like since uh, January, like the 2021, because mm-hmm. everyone was like, "Oh, this year is going to be better," which it slowly is getting better. But I don't know what's mm-hmm. been. I feel like I've been in this 2021 for like five years. Just the amount of things mm-hmm. that have gone gone on, and yeah. I'm sure with yourself, right? The the 
the encounters or, you know, just the changes that, that are going on, whether it's at work or whether it's at home, <laughs> uh, a lot of stuff. Yeah. No, it's definitely, it's been crazy. It's been, uh, I think it's been fast paced in terms of, cause I mean, as you said, in this industry, you never know what your next job is going to be. And honestly, in January, yeah. I, was, I had, I finished a different job in like December and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I'm just going to keep looking for, for work. And what were you doing before? And, what were you doing before? Uh, so during the summer into the fall, I was working on a factual show as a story assistant. So nice. similar, similar to what I'm doing now, but more, it, uh, it was on a live production. So yeah, it was a bit, it was similar, but different transferable skills, but not really the same kind of thing. I wanted to ask so you this because I never went to film school, right? So I don't have that formal education. Did this uh, education, this background in film, especially with the master's program, help you to get these jobs? Or was it your creative portfolio? Uh, I would say in, indirectly, it's it's helps. I mean, well, in terms of getting this job, one of the things I did do were the two people that I didn't know on this production that kind of got me into this role. Right. Um, I had to say, like I sent them a script sample because I I specifically told um, Army uh, one of them like this is what I want to do because they thought I wanted to do more producing based on the fact that I right web series I kind of took on a producing role and I was like no like I want to be a screenwriter that's what I want to do when I get into a writer's room so one thing I can also advise is always tell people exactly yeah. what you want to do because then they're going to start listening out for you and so that's don't what I did I was like yeah don't be afraid to ask uh, uh to go in for the ask and say I you know I, I, I want to be th this that's why when I was I met you I thought of the editor position but see how you're vocal about no I wanted to be a screenwriter and an actress or yeah. whatever right so yeah, exactly, very important. Yeah. Just yeah. Say exactly what, even if it's not like you're not asking people, like even if you're not saying like, oh, uh, can you get me a job? You're not saying that. It's more like, this is what I want to do. So then in people's mind, they're always going to think of you when when you, you know, opportunities come up and that's basically how it was too. So uh, yeah, and cool. back to your question in terms of a school helps yeah, me, I would say sure. I, had to, yeah. I had to give in a, a, a script uh, or I gave them a sample of a script so that, you know, in case something came up and that script was from school, like my, my dissertation for my master's, I decided to write a script. Um, and that was based on, you know, the specific topic that was more academic, but I decided to make it creative by writing a, a pilot script. And that's what I gave them. So in that sense, it, it, it helps me because I already had a script ready coming out of school and I didn't so really, smart, yeah. I wrote, yeah, I had like little things that I, I'd written before, but nothing like when you're giving samples to productions, you need like a pilot. Usually it's like a pilot episode that you original pilot episode, sometimes specs, but not as much. Right. So it helped in that since I came out, I was ready. Um, it helped me with my confidence. I feel yeah. it helped me with like knowing a bit more about the business side of the industry. Cause there are a lot of things that, um, I probably wouldn't have known if I didn't go to school, um, like, you know, documents and, and how to do a budget and things like that. Um, but yeah, I think that that's the main thing it helps me with. I think in terms of actually getting out and doing the work, uh, it, it came through networking and, and programs that I signed up for that allowed me to further network. So, yeah. It's amazing. That's yeah. No, because, and every little bit helps, right? Like, I'm not saying to deny film education or whatever, but I'm, I am curious, right? Especially between the money you spent, the time you spent um it, it's relieving to know that it, it, it helped in, in some way maybe not like you said directly but indirectly in the sense that you were let's say you whether you had a script whether you had knowledge on how to construct one um uh, and sometimes even people might look at that and say because i know for for myself from my experience when i would apply uh more for screenwriting roles uh people will, will say like do you have a background in film education like do you go because especially with these uh, production companies or these networks they want to know that uh they're not hiring anyone off the street. <laughs> There's someone that uh, educated themselves in the industry. Um, so that's good. I'm, I'm happy it paid, uh, it paid off for you. And, um, you know, that's, that's really cool uh, in, in a sense, uh, you know, that uh, you're able, you don't know where you're going next, right? You were finishing your job, you said in the fall or December. And then that's what I mean by like contacts, you know, in, in uh, out and around and they remember you because you were voicing, like you said, you wanted to be a writer um, and they, they thought of you for this project. So I'm glad it's working out for you. Before we leave, uh, I do want to know, as I always ask a lot of creatives, what subject matter, what kind of stories do you want to explore through your filmography? 
Um, well, so far, the, the projects that have worked on are independently have been about Black women and, mm-hmm. and them and self-discovery and, you know, them and their, how they kind of come into themselves. And so those right. are definitely the stories I want to tell, stories about, um, well, I'll look some more stories about Caribbean, my Caribbean background. So that would be cool to bring that to the mainstream. I don't see very many Caribbean stories in the mainstream, so I'd love to incorporate that a little bit. Um, but yeah, more stories about strong Black women just getting their ish together. Um, yeah, and uh, right, right now I mostly write um, like dramedies, but I think I'd love to explore off of futurism, science fiction type of thing oh, nice. in the future. There you go. Yeah. yeah, so you have a palette to explore, right? You, uh, you, have, to, you have to constantly be growing, right, uh, as an artist. But mm-hmm. um, I think it's important to you, especially with our age and our... Uh, you know, status in the industry that we, we take risks and we're constantly open to different styles because we, we're still establishing ourselves. We don't know what, what we um, kind of see ourselves doing for the rest of our career, right? Like, like you said, you, you, mm-hmm. you do dramedies right now, but what if you're a sci- the next sci-fi director, right? What if you're like a Stanley Kubrick? So you don't know. Um, so right. it's constantly, it, it's important to like experiment and, and see what you can do with that. So that's, that's a lot of fun. That's cool. Really happy for you. Yeah. So I wanted to say thank you again uh, for coming on the podcast. Uh, looking to have you back uh, whenever that's possible, you know, documenting your journey. i uh, love to hear, you know, Pretty for a Whack Girl, how, how um, you know, it does in the festivals uh, that you apply to. Uh, is there a way that people can watch this or, or it's not to the public right now? Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's actually online already. Uh, so the easiest way, I guess, to, to navigate is to go on Instagram, pretty app, pretty for a whack girl. Um, and in the bio, there all the links are there. Nice. Um, so uh, on it's on YouTube through Colorize, my Colorize Productions um, account, nice. which is just Colorize TV. But easiest way to find it is to go to Instagram or nice. to prettyforawhackgirl.com. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely go check it out. Um, I'm curious. Yeah, curious how it went. Uh, Colorize Production, that's your production company? You started one too. Mm-hmm. There you go. See. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, you got you got it right. You. Uh, yeah. I, I've I've learned like in this bit like the way that the age is is you have to kind of be entrepreneurial as an artist, right? You have to be thinking uh, how to develop these projects and ex- and actually ex- execute them. So that's really cool. So yeah, go check that out, guys. Uh, pretty for a whack girl on Instagram. Links are in the bio. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Kristen. Thank you everybody for listening, and uh, we'll talk soon.